Hi guys. It is a lovely summer evening here in paradise at Bugs in a Jar Farm here. A collapse of global industrial civilization. We have somehow made it to a Tuesday night, which I think is uh, somewhere maybe June 27th, 2023, somewhere in there. So anyway, uh, I have been busy in my Joe Pie weed transplanting from hell. I'll give you a tour in a moment. But before I, I settle into the evening to the frog and lightning bug show, looking forward to that uh, this evening, just want to go through and uh, for today's Chronicle of the Collapse, once again, I want to thank my good buddy, uh, Lieutenant Tom from Vermont, has come through again with the doom scrolling. Uh, Tom is a stalwart doom scroller, and uh, he has come up with this one uh, from good old Reuters News. Can't get much more mainstream media than Reuters News Service uh, talking about, well, just ta talking about uh, a, a lot of stuff, mainly the collapse of the planet. So we're going to have a broken record rant. <clears throat> we're going to combine the... I've had I've had both of these rants a million times, so let's put them both in the same rant about these clueless morons who do not understand the concept of the bigger pie, that a pie can get bigger. I get so sick of, of hearing this crap. I've heard it ever since I've been a doomer. <clears throat> they act like the pie is only so big. So I guess when you're talking about making the planet a pie, that it can't get any bigger. But the energy pie, the energy mix pie, can just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it explodes. So we're going to talk about the energy mix pie, the ever-expanding balloon. This is, this is real complicated math. Apparently, even mathematicians cannot understand the concept of the bigger pie. That if you have a pie a certain size, and let's say you slice it up, you know, eight different directions, and the more people trying to share a, you know, a 12-inch pie, you start out with eight people, if 16 people try to share, uh, then, then everyone's piece of the pie gets smaller and smaller. However, if the size of the pie keeps getting bigger, okay, it's irrelevant. Everyone gets the same size uh, piece of pie. And we're going to combine this, and this story is an excellent example of the frying pan and the fire. It is no longer a choice on this planet. As I've been saying for years, I've had to totally edit uh, this. It is no longer a choice between the frying pan and or the fire because we, thanks to Joe Biden and all the rest of these clueless morons and these little clueless greeny lefties swallowing this crap, we get to uh, have the frying pan and the fire. Um, for a, a, a bigger and bigger piece of pie, and before I get into this, because I'll forget about it, is uh, I've mentioned this before, this research. I really want to look this up, if someone can help me with this, because it's very relevant to this story and this whole discussion uh, about this absolute bullshit 
that people are going to voluntarily shrink their footprint, as I have done by about 90%. Uh, that there was this research several years ago uh, that I read somewhere, and I want to find it, and what it was talking about is how people, my computer has crashed. Great. So, uh, anyway, back again. Uh, how people they will work harder to protect what they already have than they will work to gain more. Uh, you know, he with the most toys when he dies wins that there is some psychological programming in the little peanut homo sapien brain that once you attain a certain measure of, uh, <clears throat> of material success, which certainly includes energy, that you are going to work harder to protect what you have, just look at hoarders, for instance. We're all hoarders. That someone who has amassed all of this crap uh, is going to work harder to hold on to this planet-eating shit than the people who don't even have the shit are going to work trying to get it. I mean, we're always hearing about, you know, all of these little brown people and little yellow people and uh, skinny black people and, and all of these different colored people uh, trying to be like honky, that more and more people uh, are trying, you know, in India, China, at some point, Sub-Saharan Africa, trying to get more and more and more of this stuff. You can't blame them. But as hard as they are clawing each other and killing each other uh, to, to get more and more of the stuff that Honky already has, Honky, who already has it, is, is going to work harder to hold on to this shit then everybody else is working to turn into honky. And, and, and this is why any pretense that uh, particularly the 1% or whatever are going to voluntarily, uh, through consumer and lifestyle choices, uh, going to reduce their ecological footprint. It's absurd. For for every for every one uh, of me, you, you know, selling a beautiful four bedroom, three bath house home in South Austin, Texas, with a two car garage full of so much shit, I couldn't park either one of my cars in it, you know, to buy this little shack on the side of the road, and to live in, and to move into a converted old tool shed, measuring seven feet by seven feet, most people aren't going to do this. Even the people who eat five grams of mushrooms, are not going to do this. For every one of me, there's going to be 10,000 little brown people trying to become what I used to be, and you better believe what I still am is, uh, is a damn planet eater. But anyway, so you just have to keep this. Uh, it's a real interesting study. Could somebody find that and send it to me so I could read that. But we're going just to, uh, with, with that long intro, we're going to get, get back to Reuters News. Take it away, mainstream media. Renewables growth did not dent, did not dent fossil fuel dominance in 2022, report says, wow, who would have thunk it?
global energy demand rose 1% last year and record renewables growth did nothing to shift the dominance of fossil fuels, which still accounted for <coughs> damn, which still accounted for 82 percent of supply of global energy supply, which still accounted for 82 percent of supply. The industry's statistical review of world energy report said on Monday. Last year was marked by turmoil in the energy markets after Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which helped to boost gas and coal prices to record levels in Europe and Asia. The stubborn lead, the stubborn lead of oil, gas, and coal products in covering most, meaning 82 percent, of our energy demand cemented itself in 2022, despite the largest ever increase in renewables capacity at a combined 266 gigawatts with solar leading wind power growth, the report said. So anyway, you know, over and over and over, over again, you're going to hear these clueless little lefty greenies like Joe Biden and AOC and, and all of these people talking about how renewable energy uh, hit record levels last year. So how could it be? This is a real brain teaser. How could it be that renewable energy, which of course is the fire of the frying pan, not even getting into the frying pan and the fire. Okay, just completely ignoring that, that this renewable energy crap is every bit as damaging and more and more I'm coming to the conclusion uh, that all of this crap is more damaging to this planet than fossil fuels when, when you add in all of the mining. Uh, there's no difference, but, but not even going there, okay? It just doesn't make any sense. And, and the vast majority of people swallowing this bright green lie unadulterated horseshit, biggest lie of the 21st century, almost up there with sustainable development, uh, is how could renewables keep growing and growing in total uh, out energy output, yet fossil fuels stay right there where they are? It's because the whole fucking pie is getting bigger, guys. We're demanding more and more and more and more energy. This is exactly why you can't tell the difference a bit between the uh, fossil fuel guys and the green guys anymore. They figured out. They're laughing all the way to the bank. Do you get it? You're getting scammed. You're getting scammed. Okay, as long as the total energy demand from all sources keeps growing and growing and growing and growing, as more and more and more people get more and more money to buy more and more energy and all of this fossil fuel crap to run on it, and, and, the, and the folks who already have this shit aren't about to let go of it, this is real rocket science, okay? You don't have to be a damn mathematician. Okay, this is President, this is Juliet Davenport, President of the UK-based global industry body Energy Institute. Quote, Despite further strong growth, 
in wind and solar in the power sector, overall global energy-related greenhouse gases, gases, gas emissions increased again. Huh. How is that possible? We are still heading in the opposite direction to that required required by the Paris Agreement, close quote. Damn, what is blooming out there at Pollen Up Your Nose Farm? Okay. Anyway, moving on. Scientists say the world needs to cut greenhouse gas emissions by around 43% by 2030. Seven years from now, from 2019 levels, to have any, have any, to have any, any hope of meeting the international Paris Agreement goal of keeping warming well below two C above pre-industrial levels. I don't need to go on to a rant about this BS Paris Agreement which is going to do absolutely zero to save this planet on any level. I don't need to go into a third layer of the onion in this rant. Okay, so here are some highlights from the report. Looking back over how we, how the fossil fuel to renewables revolution went last year. Let's start with total consumption. All right. Global primary energy demand grew around 1%, slowing <coughs> from the previous year's 5.5%, which was, you know, a, uh, a product of the bounce back from the corona panic you know looking at 2021 you know you can't that that's it's not comparing apples to apples okay 2020 and therefore 2021 were outliers so you just kind of have to ignore them and kind of jump from 2019 to 2022 to get a more accurate picture of this line. Uh, <clears throat> so 2022's demand was still 3% above pre-corona panic levels in 2019. So not counting that little, you know, that little weird blip in 2020 and 2021, from 19, from 2019 through 2022, went up 3%. Energy consumption grew everywhere apart from Europe. So I guess energy consumption in Europe, it didn't say how much it went down. Renewables excluding hydropower, they never give the... Uh, the figures on hydropower, renewables excluding hydropower accounted for 7.5% of global energy consumption, which was around 1% higher than the previous year. However, the share of fossil fuels in the global energy consumption remained at 82%. Huh. So, electricity generation for the planet was up 2.3%. Wind and solar power did grow to a record share of 12% of power generation, again surpassing nuclear, which fell 4.4%, and meeting 84% of net electricity 
demand growth. Uh, so, all right, let, let, let me figure out how to explain, put that in, in words that e e even a clueless moron uh, I, I understand. So you take the demand growth, the extra layer of demand, all right, so these renewables did meet 84% of a pie that was 3% bigger than the pie was in 2019, okay? However, fossil fuels... I made up the other 16%. So the pie, the pie, the size it was of 2019, is still the same mix. So this is how uh, you can have all of this. This is how th that these lion sacks of shit can come on there and claim without lying. This is how statistics lie, saying, look at this. These renewables met 84% of the demand growth. Yeah, to a bigger pie. Anyway, Cole's share in power generation remained dominant at around 35.4%. So last year, coal power was still the number one way that power was generated on this planet, even though renewables made, met 84% of the demand, it did not dent coal. Okay, let's look at I think we might come back to coal in a minute. So what are the statistics on oil? <laughs> oil consumption, oil consumption, increased by 2.9 million barrels per day to 97.3 million barrels per day. So... All of this crap about just stop oil, we use pretty much 3 million gallons every day of oil, more oil on this planet in the year 2022 than the year before, and we wonder why we saw record greenhouse gas emissions last year. This is, this is real rocket science. <clears throat> Most oil demand growth came from revived appetite for jet fuel and diesel-related products as the number of clueless morons, including myself, taking to the skies. Uh, I was just doing a rant where last week they made the single biggest jumbo jet order in human history, 500 of these uh, jumbo jets were ordered last week. Uh, as all of these clueless morons getting on airplanes flying all over this planet. Uh, how many airplanes was I on last year? Okay. I'm a little unclear about this. Oil production grew by 3.8 million barrels. So consumption increased by 2.9 million barrels, but oil production grew by 3.8 million barrels. I'm a little unclear where that 0.9 million barrels, is it just piling up in reserves, or did it spill uh, in, into the Yellowstone River? Where did that, uh, anyway, oil production grew by 3.8 million barrels per day, with the lion's share 
coming from OPEC members and the United States. You will be shocked to hear that Nigeria saw the largest decline and oil refining capacity grew by 534,000 barrels per day last year. So we're refining oil into all of these petroleum products, 534,000 gallons uh, more at the end of the year than at the beginning of the year. Okay, how about our good friend natural gas, the Save the Planet natural gas? Amid record prices in Europe and Asia, global gas demand actually fell 3% last year because it was so expensive, so people were just burning the forest down instead. Uh, that's because of the, you know, the price of gas going through the roof in Europe and Asia. Uh, people just started burning their furniture. Uh, but still, even though it fell 3% because of the high price, it still made up 24% of primary energy consumption. Gas production was stable year on year, but the biggest newer, newest player on the block is this shit called liquefied natural gas, or LNG, which is kind of a contradiction in terms. Is it a liquid or is it a gas? Liquefied natural gas, or LNG, produ production was up 5% at 542 billion, with a B, cubic meters, a similar pace to the previous year with most growth in LNG coming from North America and the Asia-Pacific region. Uh, Europe accounted for much of LNG's demand growth, increasing its imports by 57%. Meanwhile, Japan replaced China as the world's largest LNG importer. And it is starting to rain. So, uh, is my camera still on? Little dog, we got to get out of here. It's raining. I'm glad to say. Sancho, come on now. Are you going to stay in the chair or what? Sancho. Okay, it is a rainy day at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Sancho, are you getting out of the chair or not? Alright, so where were we as my battery light flashes? Okay, so now let's talk about coal. You know, all of this myth out there of the death of King Coal. Coal prices hit record levels last year, rising 145% in Europe and 45% in Japan. Come on now, Sancho. <clears throat> Coal consumption rose by 0.6% last year, its highest level since 2014, huh? Driven mainly by Chinese and Indian demand, while consumption in North America and Europe declined. Coal output, whatever that means, was 7% higher in 2022 than in 2021, with China, India, and Indonesia accounting for most of the growth. So obviously we're wondering how this stacks up against renewables. Growth in renewable power, excluding hydropower, slowed down 
slightly. Growth in renewable power slowed down slightly to 14 percent, but solar and wind capacity still showed a record increase of 266 gigawatts with solar taking the lion's share, although as we were talking about it did nothing uh, to not fall to move the needle of fossil fuels, which stayed at 82% because the pie grew 3%. <clears throat> okay, and so where does that leave emissions? Global energy-related emissions, including industrial processes and flaring, were up, were up. 0.8% reaching a new high of 39.3 billion tons of CO2 equivalent. There you go. And finally, what everyone is now looking at, minerals, minerals. Lithium carbonate, you know what they make these lithium batteries out of, which I have about 10 of in my house right now. Lithium prices jumped 335%. 335%. Cobalt prices were up 24%. It does not mention nickel, copper, and aluminum. I would like to know where nickel, cobalt, and aluminum were. And finally, last year, lithium and cobalt production rose 21%. So the mining of lithium and cobalt uh, up 21% in one year, and that number is going to keep rising uh, while we get to enjoy the, we get to enjoy burning in the frying pan and the fire. But, uh, while all that is happening, it is a spectacularly gorgeous summer evening, and it bugs in a jar farm. You hear the frogs crank it up. This is what I have been doing today is, is weed whacking, getting my little, uh, <laughs> my little coyote. Um, yeah, two big ass limbs fall in that damn uh, windstorm last night. I've become a uh, a madman for Joe Pie weed. I don't know what this big old thing is, but I like it. It just came up. This is my new Joe Pie weed. All right, the pond actually came up. We're actually getting some rain at Bugs in a Jar Farm. We have happy frogs. All right, look at all this water in the pond. Happy frogs. The lightning bug show should commence in a few minutes. All right, water back in the pond. All right, get out there and enjoy your frog song while you still can. I'm gonna go take advantage of some of this propane. I've never really understood where propane uh, how it plays into uh, natural gas and LNG. Uh, 
moment. I'm going to go crank up one of my uh, one of my four propane tanks. So I need to eat one of my fellow Earthlings while I still can. Bye, guys.